doors. And then we'll pop the DR in near the, uh, the side of the tree. All the doors are closed and locked. There's nobody there. So where are we going? The main thing that's got everybody who's uh, a driver has used the simulator so far is, is the accuracy of the simulation. As a train driver, the gradients, the curves, where you would brake um, is very, very similar to reality. It is quite varied, but we would usually go for like a 10 or 20 minute sort of simulation that's based around a purpose. We discuss a lot of stuff theoretically in the classroom with drivers. They won't actually experience it until they go out and do the job. Yeah. Uh, they could go three, four, five years even longer without uh, having to deal with a certain incident. Previously, if I was to describe this to trainee drivers, this scenario that's happening now, um, it would entirely be tabletop, you know, drawn on a whiteboard or um, explained with the rule book. And obviously that still forms a large part of it, but people being able to visualize what will happen and when makes our life a lot easier in terms of helping people to understand the new train as well. You do get immersed. Um, when I first went on it, it was a little bit strange. Um, aside from the fact that it's a totally different train cab, you know, having to get used to that. Um, but you do, you just feel like you're driving a train. To have the simulator in now, from our point of view as, as the specialists, we can test things out on the train now before we actually get the train. We've been part of the design stage uh, right the way through last year into this year, and all different kinds of groups of people came, you know, the. the you know, people that are blind, people that are deaf, and you know they put their point across, and that's gone into the design stage. So actually, the train that we're getting has been kind of designed by the people that use it as well. You know, it's not just you know Nexus staff, Metro drivers. It's actually people who use it on a daily basis. You know, comfort for the driver. The cab's bigger. The view of the field of view, sorry, is bigger. You know, it's it's all nice and, and aerated. It's air con. It's closed off. It's quite soundproof as well. You know, it, it is a job where you do have to concentrate for long periods of time. So all that, you know, it's going to help. And on the passenger side of thing, you know, lighter, brighter, more secure. CCTV's everywhere. The information system's much better. This is just a step change in terms of the functionality, the operability, and, and how much easier it's going to make the actual driving job. Um, but again. If it makes the driving job easier, then it means we're able to offer a better service. You know, we are changing the train, not so much infrastructure. It means if the overhead line was to go off, we can drop the pantographs and they have got a battery pack on, so we'll actually get out of trouble <laughs> until we can get the overheads back on, um, which means there's no stranded passengers will always get them to a station and or continuous service as well. So it's basically, if you're anywhere in the system, we could get get the train back to a station, mm. offload passengers if we need to, and even back to the depot. The simulator is so incredibly important as we move into transition to the new fleet. The first new train should be here this year. We're all excited for that, although it'll be July next year till it gets into customer service. <laughs>